Chouette. Well, um, thanks for your time, sir. Yeah, no really problem. appreciate it. Um, I'm going to get the questions that everybody's asked you right away. Um, which ones annoyed you the most? <laughs> <laughs> They've all been good. Have they? Yeah. I don't I'm believe you. I spoke to another journalist before I came in here and he told me otherwise, but it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. We can leave that. Scar. Yeah. The bitter one. Yeah. How did you get into the role, Chiwetel? I mean, how did you really go about getting into it? Deliver it in not only a way that people would expect, mm -hmm. um, but in a way that brings your own inimitable contribution to the character. I just wanted to kind of um, look at the psychology of Scar, really, to sort of uncover what motivates Scar, you know, why he is the way he is, why he's so kind of broken and, um, uh, and sort of inter internally in his mind sort of diseased, you know, and it's, and it's centered around for me this idea of, um, of this kind of sort of pathological um, desire and addiction to power and status. Um, and so that was the kind of starting point, the sort of jump off point for me, just to kind of look at um, the, the idea that, you know, that somebody can, be, can become obsessed with those things, especially status, really, um, and feel that without it, without being given his proper, his proper due, as he sees it, that, um, you know, he just can't rest, he can't sleep, he can't, you know, he, can't, he just, he can't find peace you know, in, in his life. And, uh, and that becomes the motivating factor for everything that he does afterwards. I love the, the movie's message, circular life, growth, responsibility, coming of age, love, so many positives conveyed. So, so what resonates with you the most? Well, watching it this time, you know, I, I think all of the themes of it I had a relationship to when I watched the original, you mm. know, but watching it this time, something else happened that I hadn't expected or foreseen and, and hadn't really even thought about particularly before, which was the idea of home, you know, and what our relationship is to home, mm. how we have to reconcile our relationship with home before we can really uh, achieve a kind of full maturation you know and um and it was and it's that it's it's kind of and that's not scar's journey that's that's simba's journey you know and and that returning back and how important that is to either um how all that saying that all roads lead home in the end you know that uh, that doesn't have to be physically lead home but some kind of resolution or some kind of um understanding of home has to happen at some point be honest um, and don't say both. Which audience do you think this one uh, will resonate more with? The ones watching for the f for the first time, or the ones watching a remake? I think the ones watching for the first time. You know, I think that it has all of the obviously it has all of the elements that we love about the Lion King, and uh, and I feel like it also then you know has this. I think John Favreau has done this really incredible thing with the with the technology mm. and to to sort of take technology and take the technological advancements that step further but to also tell this incredible story is uh, is so rich for somebody seeing it for the first time i can't even imagine what that would feel like uh, with Great. the music and uh, first time i've seen it so really you didn't see no, the original i haven't, you, you, I haven't you, seen anything so you've never is, seen the this original is, this is my first introduction to life. oh wow yeah, right. so. And how was it? So I mean, you, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm asking. Because for me, it was great. And, <laughs> but I'm talking to people that have seen it, yeah. and they're looking at me like, "Well, you we all know what happens." And I'm like, "Yeah, but oh, yeah, you all know." So it's, it, right. for me, I just loved it. Okay. Um, literally, the, the question I asked before was just how I felt. You know, so many positive messages. Yeah, sure. Um, also, a positive from my perspective is the majority black cast. Yeah, D Disney delivered. Yeah, that's um, right. <laughs> you know, talk about the significance of that. Yeah, I mean, look, when I first saw The Lion King, when I first even heard that there was a film coming out called The Lion King, in my family and in my home, when I was, I mean, I was 17, you know, I wasn't like a kid kid, you know, even though my, when I think about it sometimes, I think of myself as a kid because it put me in that sort of state. But I was 17, and in that context, you know, there was a, they'd not, I had, I didn't really remember a film that was set in Africa mm. that had a kind of, that, in that sort of broad level, 
you know, that was coming out on a kind of platform and a sort of big platform like that, like the, the original Lion King was. And so it had an added significance and importance to me and to the family and the community because, you know, it was going to it was going to be set in Africa. It was it had positive images of Africa. It had the music, the sounds of Africa, mm. you know, that it had this energy that was coming and, and a, a sense of celebration and a representation of the continent in a positive way. And there was, I mean, as little as there was in content about Africa, there was almost nothing that was positive anyway, you know, at that period. There's, you know, there's, you know, it, not that that's improved vastly, but I was it's going to say, yeah, yeah but still, it's all similar now. But it was, yeah. uh, but at that point there was absolutely nothing, you know, more or less. So, so that's why it was very important project, you know, that I when I saw it the first time. So, you know, in this iteration of it, I think that it was it's a it's a great step, you know. Even though I think that it's also it's weird that the conversation even happens in a way that there's any conversation about diversity, especially if a project that's set in Africa, you know, it it seems um, that that also indicates that there's still a process to go through, you know, mm. but. But but nonetheless, you know, I think it was um, a really a very strong kind of positive choice, you know, from uh, from Disney, from John Favreau, yeah. from uh, all of the f filmmakers, to make sure that the that the representation felt um, um, was a was a solid part of the DNA, of, genuine uh, as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, Hakuna Matata, no worries for the rest of your day. What's your life motto? I don't. <laughs> I don't have a life motto, really. Do you not? No, no. I don't have that the, the sort of mantra that I say to myself to. Mm. Not really, but um, but and I doubt that it would be Hakuna Matata. <laughs> <It's> fair <laughs> to, enough, to be honest. Yeah. But the um, you know, I mean, I appreciate the sentiment of to Hakuna Matata. Mm. But the uh, but I feel I think that there's something that the film talks about in terms of that. That you know, I mean, you wouldn't know this, but when we were all watching the movie 25 years ago, mm. Hakuna Matata was like. It became everybody's mantra, you know, and um, and uh, and actually in the interim period, in the, the 25 years later, you know, I think we have a slightly more complicated relationship with the idea of uh, of no worries and letting everything just sort of be, you know. Mm. I think we're now in an era of worry. Yeah, I mean, for me, <laughs> it's a great worry. message um, for the kids, you know, because of what you just said, we're in an era where they're exposed to a lot of worries and stuff that stressing them out that really shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. Your thoughts on that? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think there are some things that should stress them out, you know. Okay. And uh, and uh, I mean, I don't mean young kids should walk yeah, around yeah. being stressed Stress, out. Yeah. But they should be aware <laughs> exactly. of stuff. I mean, I think that one of the things about this film is is um, that I think, and for young people as well, it again reconnects to, you know, nature, to our, our, our you know, that. The, the planet in a, in, a, in a natural form, mm. you know, which inevitably brings up thoughts about, you know, our, our environment and climate change and how we are dealing with those things and are we being as as active and as serious, you know, on a on a governmental on a supranational level mm. as we as we should be, you know, um, uh, and we're not, you know, obviously. So it 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 is something that I think you know has a, a resonance. You know, just uh, even, and it's it's strange, isn't it, now that even just representations of the natural world has its own political energy, mm. because um, you know it, it is in and itself political, which is interesting. Thanks for your time, sir. Pleasure. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you.